welcome to South County Spotlight on Frontier Community Access Television. As always, I'm your host, Chris Collins, back in the studio again to talk to a guy who's somewhat of a legend in Deerfield politics. I know he, <laughs> he'll roll his eyes when I say that, but Mark Gilmore has been on the select board for how many terms now? I don't know. <laughs> you know I have no idea. What I do know is that you got into office by beating another political legend in this area, Betty Kirkwood, many years ago at the tail end of my tenure here as the beat reporter for the Greenfield Recorder. And here you are going for three more years in a job that, uh, well, it's very time consuming. Why do you want to run again? I got some things I really like to finish up. I've been working with uh, <coughs> the ambulance service. I'd like to finish that and get that into a stable orbit. I'd like to get uh, the senior center um, in a planning stage, at least at a minimum, um, deal with the, the building and the seniors to get them more, more services and more space. Um, those are two primary things that I'm really interested in, and obviously getting our sewer facility in place and, and working on that. I want to talk about all those things because I know that, and I want to talk about planning specifically because I think that you, from what I understand from, from watching some of the comments you've made recently, you're concerned that the town is not really in a, in a good place in terms of a long-term plan. Before we get to that, let's talk about SCEMS because South County EMS is something that's generated quite a bit of controversy. There's been talk about moving it from the South Deerfield Fire Station to Waitley, and that's got some people in Deerfield upset. Um, where do you stand on the idea of SCEMS moving, and how do you propose to stabilize the organization, as you said? Well, I think the organization is really stabilized in the sense that we've got a great operations. It, they're doing a phenomenal job. They're really uh, boots on the ground. They, they're picking up. You know, and they come in here and get uh, informational stuff out. They've gone out and done outreach. Uh, they go into the schools. They've uh, really got a good um, jump start on how to actually make it work. Um, as if for moving for Waitley, um, I was for it. I was interested in buying the building before Waitley um, stepped up and said they wanted to. And I stepped back at that point in time because I felt that if it was in somebody's town, they should own it. If it was going to go just to <coughs> be sold, I thought it was an excellent idea for us to have for SCEMS and for a senior center. Um, so moving doesn't bother me. Um, there could, there are a few things that would make it better if we had better access, but it's not outside the target area of what we think is um, a good response time. What do you say to the argument of, of some people who say that, in fact, Moving into Waitley would drastically impact the, the response time. I mean, the response time, as I understand it, is drastically better than it was when Deerfield had its right. own ambulance. Right. But is there is there a legitimate concern there that moving to Waitley would somehow impact the ability to get to Deerfield or to Frontier? When we started the um, <coughs> ambulance service, the uh, consultant that looked at that actually took two targets. They took a target at... Um, the Deerfield Fire Station at the end at the Sunderland, sorry, um, Sunderland Fire Station. And basically it was about a 3% difference in time. Uh, it said it would um, drastically improve services, 30% uh, at um, South Deerfield, and it was like 28 or 27% in Waitley, I mean in Sunderland. So moving it to that spot in Waitley, it's like halfway in between, I think there'll be some people. Obviously, if you move the pin around, um, my house is going to be further away than it is right now. But for um, people in Sunderland and, and some people down in um, Beaver Drive and River Road and um, North Waitley and some of those, they're going to get a better response time. It's not taking it out of the... Um, circle in which we think is the target zone for having a facility run out of. It could have better access, I mean, but that's, it's livable. Um, and for us, it's a, it's a start. I think that we'll outgrow the building uh, or have to take over more space in the building if we do what I'd like to see is the, the major outreach and um, community services. But it's good for right now. It's the, the big key for us right now is to get all of the um, personnel and equipment in one place. Yeah, because it's spread out all over, and that's right. not and, the best way to run the thing. And that's actually, if you think about it, 
um, we have a seven minute uh, response time. Um, part of that is because if we go, have to go get the second ambulance because we have a run, um, the second run, we, our time starts when the run call comes in. So we drive to Sunderland and get an ambulance and then come back from Sunderland or go to Sunderland. It can affect the response times just as much as moving to Waitley. And so if you were all in one spot, like if you were all coming out of Waitley, then in, what you're saying is that that, that taking that time off to go to Sunderland would actually make it a quicker response. A quicker response. And the thing is, we've at one point we were thinking we'd be, have enough um, EMTs in the area to, to have a call base. Um, and we were asking for people and we paid them a stipend to, to come in and, and be on call to be the second. Um, and if they got in, then they got paid full, for, for, full cost for it. And <clears throat> it just not working. I mean, people uh, that have been doing it for a really long time, um, some of the great people here that have serviced us uh, are tired. They've uh, done 25, 28, 30 years, um, and the young people are working, and the time's not available for them. So I think they really, the call idea was a great one to try, but it didn't work. So we put a, th um, a third e paramedic or um, a second paramedic, whichever way you want to look at it, because we only have to have one paramedic on a crew. So a third person that we're putting on it is a paramedic, which would allow that paramedic to get the, into the ambulance and have a call person meet them there. It has drastically improved our services, and uh, we think it's a great target. We'll you know, monitor it for a year and see if it, we like it at the end of a year's period. But it works really well, but it would work even better if the ambulance was where that third person was, and um, so it's a, it's. Um, I think it's working phenomenally. I think that all of this, whether we move, don't move, um, and the discussion about the um, revenues and how they work are just pieces that need to work themselves out. Well, let's talk about the the revenue issue and the voting issue because I know that there are some people who are very, very adamant that Deerfield should have more of a say in how SCEMS is run because Deerfield pays 53% of the cost and yet has an equal vote along with Waitley and Sundorn. And that's been a source of aggravation for some people. And admittedly, I think some of those people are, are aggravated at the idea, the same ones are aggravated at the idea of the, of the service leaving Deerfield altogether and going mm -hmm. to Waitley. So right. how, do you, how do you respond to that? Well. Um to those people who think they're not getting their fair share because we only have two votes, the town of Deerfield controls the budget. We approve it in our annual town meeting. Um, we pay every pay all the bills. We watch what's going on. We have a fiscal agent, um, and basically we hire all the people. We have a lot more say than um, any of the other towns do, but we're just acting on the advice or the recommendations of a Board of Oversight that's phenomenal. These people are uh, totally engaged. They, I don't think there's been two arguments in, in the whole time we've been um, working. We all listen and we take the best route that we can think of and we learn as we're going through the process. So I think that we've got a lot more than the two votes represent. The committee has recommended that we, um, the Board of Oversight has recommended that um, we make the fiscal agent um, a voting member, which would give a, the town of Deerfield, again, more um, say in it. But the other aspect of it, looking from an other angle, is the fact that we use the ambulance 51 to 54 percent of the time, depending on how you, you skew your numbers but more than 50%, we use that ambulance. We're getting what we're paying for. We're getting 51% of the service, and the service is phenomenal. I cannot say enough about the people that have been out there. Um, I, I think that uh, we had a meeting the other night, and it was on the 30th, and basically um, they unveiled the fact that we had 13 of our EMT paramedics nurses in town um, work in, uh, in conjunction with one another and had three saves in the town of Deerfield in mm. 2015. I can't remember when I've heard that many saves in a town in quite a while and so we're doing it right and I'm 
to those people that are skeptical of it, I hope they keep asking the questions because it was going to make us better. But I'm not worried about it. I think that it will work itself out and the town of Deerfield is ending up with a phenomenal service out of it. Switching gears, the town's wrapping up its budget process, and one of the things I think that's been a, a concern expressed is that maybe the town is relying too much on free cash, that, that we're using too much free cash to balance things. Is the town too dependent on that free cash, do you think? And, and is there a better way to run this without having to rely so much on that? It's, a, it's how you look at it. Um, we are very, very conservative in how we make our decisions. We don't spend, we don't look at a lot of potentials for money and spend it. Um, we try to make our budgets really bone, bare bones at the bottom. So if we keep our budgets tight and we um, underestimate the receipts in, we are gonna have free cash. Um, I don't think that's going to change because I don't think we're going to um, not spend conservatively. Um, but I do agree in the concept of that we spend too much free cash. We should be taking that free cash because we saved it off of the fiscal year and it should go into um, a stabilization fund, um, a capital stabilization fund, something that will give us long-term protection. Um, and the easiest way to, sh to show it <coughs> with real numbers, if you look at the school roof, um, basically we were putting $50,000 away to replace a roof. We had 200 plus thousand dollars in the bank. We skipped a couple of years because we really couldn't afford it, but I think we were a little um, short-sighted in that aspect of it. Um, I think that we should be taking a good portion of that free cash, leaving it for, um, you know, about 5% for in case there's an emergency during the year. Um, but everything else should go to uh, a, cable, a stabilization or a capital stabilization fund if we can get a good capital plan, five-year, ten-year plan, so that we know what we're going to be targeting. Is there a capital plan now? Yes, there we is? do it, but it's, we have a good capital plan. We have a lot of great people working with it, but we've never thought of it as a, um, have the money up front. Okay, we so use it's, a, it's we use a wish list then. Yeah, it's a wish list, it, you know, it, and it's been down for almost 20 years. It goes out for the 20 years of replacing the equipment in the highway garage and the highway department and the police department, and we've, we've ferret all those out, and we pretty much hit our targets. Um, but it doesn't take in consideration for things like uh, the school roof, the senior center, the, um, so I think we need to be taking a good chunk before we start our budget and say this is allocated for capital improvements or stabilization or, or whatever, and we should be, be able to put that aside why do you think it hasn't happened before now? Is it because, is it a select board issue? Is it a town meeting issue? I think, that the, I think it's a select board issue. Um, and I think that the select board and the finance committee needs to start thinking in a different way. There's nothing wrong with what we've done. I mean, we've, we've, we've never really had any major issues in, in um, the finances of it. Yeah, then the override either to, had to, to cover that override. Budget, right. So we're doing fairly good, but I think we're spending a lot more, um, and I, I don't mean that in the fact that we need to be cutting budgets or something. I think we just need to be smarter about how we do things. I think that we can find some ways of, of either improving services so that if we have to charge more money, it's a, it's a reasonable request. Um, but I think we really need to, to figure it out. Um, cutting budgets is not the way to do it. No. Uh, cutting people is not the way to get better. We need to figure out how to be smarter and take advantage of, th of things that are out there that we haven't done. Doug's done a phenomenal job of looking for things and finding things and g throwing things on the table for us to consider. It, but it highlights more that we need money uh, if we're going to do some of these things. Well, I think what's important also when you're talking about financial planning is it seems like Lately, with regard to state aid, it seems like towns end up in this, what's I call a five-year vortex, where everything is fine for four, four and a half years, and on the fifth year, 
boom, you know, suddenly you're you're in the hole a quarter million, five hundred thousand, whatever. Right. And so the what you want, I think, is to be as steady as steady as possible right. with your finances. And the only way to do that is as I said, I is to is to find a way to squirrel some money away when you can. Right. And I mean it, it when you go back to, to scams in that aspect of it, if you look at the success of our districts you know, our water districts, um, well, so, so much South Deerfield more than, than Old Deerfield, but South Deerfield has a, a substantial amount of money if they need to drill a well or anything else. They don't have to go ask for the money. They've been put in a way in good funds so that basically it's the same thing with the fire department. They, you know, they didn't come out and ask for money to replace their roof. Um, they don't have to, you know, they're um, paying off their bonds as, as you know, in a, and and on top of it, they're putting money away, and they have, you know, a f substantial amount of money put away. Um, and ambulance services got the same, same things. We're going to have to make sure we can cover our beds. The one thing that's good about us is we don't have the overhead of a building. Not yet. Well, even if we rent, even that time, even the building, we we have a rent. Yeah. We have a lot of rent going out, but what I'm saying is. I don't think we'll ever have a building to, uh, to have to put new roofs on and, and capital. So we'll be paying rent, I think, for a while. When we get our new building, it's going to be a good you know, 20 or 30 year building, so we don't have to worry about fixing it, but somebody will someday. Speaking of capital projects, uh -oh. the sewage treatment plant. Yes. I know that you've been talking for a while now about the need to upgrade the facility. What needs to be done there? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what needs to be done immediately? Um, the head end um, is the important key to, to uh, having us have successful operations now. Um, and basically it um, brings a lot of safety to the, to the facilities. Uh, it's basically um, way overdue being worked on. Um, and that needs to be the keystone of getting any other conversations going. Till that's fixed, you can't talk about expansion. You can't talk about um, taking in sewage. You can't, you know, you can't do anything more than what we're doing right now. What's um, a ballpark price tag for something like that? Um, I'd say it's going to end up being between one and $1.5 million to fix that portion of it. And is that paid for through increases in rates or do you have to bond it probably, right? We, um, well, it's going to be paid by, by the rate payers. Um, the people that use the service are going to uh, pay for it. Betterment charges. Um, I don't think so. I, I, we haven't figured exactly how because we don't have the solid number on it. But the, the um, a fair and equitable way of being paid needs to be derived. I mean, um, there is some good as, and you know, even the proponents realize that there's a good to having it. There's a reason that we have a good commercial base and our buildings stay full because people don't have to worry about that. Um, and it, it keeps commerce in here. So the townspeople have to pay for that privilege or that because they don't, the, uh, business people pay for a lot more than we give them. Right. It's the homeowners pay a lot more, uh, pay a lot less and get a lot more of our services. So um, a fair and equitable conversation. I think everybody w wants it to be a fair and equitable thought process. So we will, we'll come up with a good way of uh, um, balancing the, the budget on that and how it works. Is there a time frame for that work to be done or is it something that's gonna be a long-term five, 10 year project? Oh, I think that this project will out survive me for, for, at least I hope I'm not here when, <laughs> when they finish it up. Uh, it will be done in phases. Yeah. And um, it, it's, we're looking at everything from um, doing away with the Old Deerfield uh, facility. Uh, Should you have it. one facility for the whole town? Um, that or regionalize it with more of a pocket of where it mm -hmm. is. We have a lot of work to do on Old Deerfield and it's, very under, underutilized, so it could be that we ship things that way mm -hmm. and move it different ways. Um, so, from my, you know, from my standpoint, 
the engineers and the people that look at the lay of the land and figure out how we can do this and not have a lot, a lot of overhead or cost. You know, some of the, the pumping stations are extremely expensive really, to, yeah. to operate and to have in place. So we're looking at, you know, easy, simple fixes that are not the Cadillac of a, of a repair. But the good news is the technology is always improving. And oh, it's yeah. much, much more, uh, it's better in, the, in its operation than it yeah. than previous years. Energy costs are considerably less with, would the technology have. But no matter what you do, um, it's, you got to move the, the poop from here to there. So it's, it's going to be, uh, there has to be some of the transport you know, um, expenses that go along. And that's not cheap stuff. And pipes, or putting stuff in the ground is not cheap. Town meeting is coming up. There's going to be an article on there asking if the moderator or if the town would allow the moderator to form a committee to look at whether or not to change or alter somehow Deerfield's form of government. Does Deerfield's form of government need to change, do you think? I think it deserves a look at. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it, it's been this way for a long time. Uh, people have you know, gone out to four, uh, I mean, five selectmen, some have nine selectmen, you know, they have a mayor or a town manager or however, um, it's, it's, as I said, definitely needs to be taken a look at. I think that changing the way we do budgeting and is a change because we've done it differently. So, and but it's not a fundamental alteration of the form of government. It's just a change in the, in the way you do business. How we, well, I think they want to look all, at all of it. Yeah. And they want, I think they want us to look at whether we have a town manager. They want to know if we want to you know, um, increase the board size. Um, you know, it, it's, we're that um, awkward, you know, swan, type of city we're, or town. We're basically in that little town, bigger town, yeah. not huge town, but we go over, we've gone over that so there's more regulations and more requirements that we should be paying attention to. And uh, there are you know, millions of pages of regulation if you want to spend time looking. You, I'm sure you'll find things that the airfield doesn't decide to do and doesn't want to do, but um, it's it's working where it is. I don't see the, the um, drastic need for change, but change is very instrumental in getting better systems. Does and town it, meeting still work as a legislative arm of government for Deerfield? It does for the legislative. Um, I think the school um, doesn't play in the legislative roles. They just they're kind of big and they kind of bully the process and yeah, they, 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 they can get what they want just by you know, putting lots of papers out to people to come to a meeting and be supportive of it. And they can capture a good population of people who have major concerns about education. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's right for the town. The school is out to make sure they educate kids. The town has to deal with the educating of kids and everything else. So. It's a, it's a little bit hard. Town meeting is a little bit hard to um, have that conversation that we should have <laughs> that talks about um, is this right, is it fair, is it equitable? Um, because in this day and age, people want what they want and they're kind of un, uh, can be sometimes unreasonable about what they want and how they get it. What a town council form of uh, a legislative arm work? Or would that be too too narrow to go from a, rep, a, a full town meeting open to just a town council? Um, I, I think it would work. I think that the one thing that we're missing now, and I'll say it over and over again, the one thing we're missing is the fact that we don't have young people and people coming in volunteering that's enthusiastic about getting the work done. Um, if you get a town council or you get uh, committees or you get wards or you get anything of that, you still have to find those people that are excited about doing it and whether they get a different title, um, you gotta draw them in. I mean, I think the bigger issue is in, you know, getting the word out to people that there's the need. Um, and we definitely have places that people can come help us. Um, there are 
umpteen jobs I would love to see people take my place on and, and just volunteer with enthusiastic, you know, to make this, uh, make it better. Um, but it, uh, we don't have that um, problem of issue of too many, <laughs> too many people wanting to volunteer. Yeah, and, and I think when they, some people when they get involved, they find out it's pretty thankless at times. Uh, and you can, you can end up being uh, a battering ram or, or, or the victim of battering rams politically. And yeah. people tend to want to not, not get involved after that for some reason. I can't imagine why. Well, it, it's, uh, it can be that way, but the gratification of, of getting the job done correctly and having people that work for the town uh, be supported and I think that, and I hope if anybody disagrees with me on this from the towns, if uh, it's a good place to work. Yeah. I, I really think that I see a lot of people that are, um, that don't mind coming into work every day. And they're good, you have a good bunch of people. Oh, we have a phenomenal, oh, it's a good team. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal, I mean, and you know, some of them were, we've homegrown and trained. Um, some of them came in with, from a whole different walk of life. Um, and they're doing a phenomenal job. Um, change to them scares them. Um, that's why information up front is really good. Um, I, for me, change has always worked to, to be better. Um, you know, if you force it, if you have the coup or you have something of that issue, then it, it doesn't go very well. Nobody wins on that one. We only have a couple minutes left. I'm going to let you speak to the people directly and Give them a final pitch as to why they should re-elect Mark Gilmore to the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> <laughs> that camera right there. Um, uh, I really don't have any final pitch for this. I really feel that I've been doing the job. Um, if you're unhappy with it, then you're going to have choices this year. And it's a long time since you guys have had a choice. So um, I would appreciate it if you got out and vote. Um, Pay attention to the issues and see where it's taken you, um, and have a good showing of voting so that basically you know what it is that they're looking for. Um, if you like my wife uh, a lot, I would probably not tell her that you voted for me. <laughs> it will not get you any points with my wife <laughs> at all. <laughs> we forget about the spouses. They're the ones that really. Oh, she's you know. She's phenomenal. She tells me that I should be done, um, <laughs> and she did that from the first uh, first time I vote, I ran. Um, but she doesn't make it hard for me. That's good. So she's good, and my kids have uh, um, now moved on, so I don't have to worry about them them liking or not liking the issue. So. Election day in Deerfield is May 2nd. As Mark said, make sure you get out and vote no matter who you're gonna be casting ballots for. There are two select board races, a three-way race for Mark's seat, and then there is a two-way race for a one-year seat that's gonna be vacated by the, the present uh, chairman of the board, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So no reason not to go to the polls. My guest has been Mark Gilmore, Deerfield Board of Selectmen. I'm Chris Collins, and that is Beacon, excuse me, that is South County Spotlight. Well, God, my show's confused. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For all of us here at Frontier Community Access Television, have a good day.